All right, so, uh, well, you know, you can deal with that part. We are talking now chapter four. Chapter four is about quantitative data. That's pretty much what we're going to look at for the, the rest of the year is, is quantitative data. I wonder if it would be more efficient if we put this over here. We'll find out. We'll put that there and see if that helps. Okay, so quantitative data, chapter four, that's what we're going to look at. Okay. When we're doing this, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a whole lot of numbers, typically large data sets of quantitative data, data that we can do some sort of function with that, that is a measurement of something. Okay. What we really want to talk about uh, is, is this. This is our big deal right here, the histogram. It's, it's a histogram. It's not a bar graph. It's a histogram. And this is really important because the histogram, the bars touch. Bar graph for categorical data, bars do not touch. They are distinctive entities. Here, these bars touch. And let's talk about why these bars touch. Let's see if this thing's going to work. Here we go. All right. So the reason that the bars touch is because this is the data set right here. And this is stock price changes from the company Enron between the year 1997 and the year 2001. And, and if you look at this, this value right here for March of the year 2000 is $4.50. That means at the beginning of March, the stock was one price. By the end of the month, that stock price has ridden $4.50. So it's a $4.50 increase during that month. Here for the month of May, it was a $1.25 decrease for that month from beginning to end. And that set looks at all those pieces of data. So let's look at April 1999. It's a $0.47 cent increase. As a $0.47 cent increase, that means that it is going to be one of these 21 values that's going to be in this bar right here. One of the 21 values is going to be in here. And we have other values. So that value of 450 would be here. That value of negative 125, that would be in between negative 5 and 0. Now, why is it that the bars have to touch here? That's because this scale is what's called continuous. By that, I mean this. Let's see if we can bring this over here. Where's the pen? Give me a pen, my friend. Okay. So by that, I mean this. This bar right here contains the values between 0 and 5. And this bar contains values between 5 and 10. So what happens if you've got a 5? Where does it go? Is it going this bar? Is it going this bar? Well, it turns out that the, the mathematics looks like this. The lowest end is in the bar. So, for example, this bar, 0 is included, and this bar goes up to but not including 5. This bar, 5 is included, goes up to but not including 10. So if I had $5, $5 would be in the bar 5 to 10. And this is really important because there's no gaps here. There's no opportunity for a value to be here. The largest, the smallest value in this bar is zero dollars. The largest value in this bar is the monetary value below five dollars, which is four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Then the next monetary value, which is five dollars, starts at this bar. So there's no opportunity for a value to be in a gap. It is continuous. And you're like, well, but wait a second, there's not a bar there. Well, that's because you've got zero frequency here. And that's okay. There's zero frequency. If there was a bar, it would continue to touch. It would go from edge to edge. So the bars have to touch. Whoop, there's, I'm looking for this right there, right there. Okay. Here is, that didn't do it at all. Oh, you know why? Because I'm not, let's, let's bring this back. Okay. So we want to do this. Let's wash the board. Wash the board. Clear annotations. Wash the board. Here we are. Okay. So now here is relative frequency. Again, just like with a bar chart, relative frequency means that you have percents over here instead of frequency. But the graph is exactly the same. That's not doing it. Okay. Graph is exactly the same here as it was in the pre. We can, we'll do it this way. Okay. Previous slide. Here's histogram, relative frequency, bar. The graph is exactly the same. It's not a bar graph. No, it's a bar graph. Okay, stem and leaf display. What's a stem and leaf display? Stem and leaf display is another method for showing this data. And, and we've been making these since kindergarten. What are the three things we learn? The three important things we learn in kindergarten is what? Stem and leaf displays. Adding fractions. 
how to eat paste. Those are the three things that you learned in kindergarten. Okay, the, the, the really important ones, all that stuff like alphabet, friends, colors, no. Stem and leaf displays, adding fractions, eating paste. Okay, so here's a stem and leaf display. And the way this works is this, which you know, but we're going to refresh, is that this side over here is the stem, this side over here is the leaf, and the leaf can only have one digit in it. The stem can have more than one digit. I can have 8, 9, 10, 11, 104, that's fine. The leaf can only have one digit in it. And this is called a split stem. Split stem. Because typically when you see a stem and leaf display, it looks like this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you would see, oh, there's the six. And for six, it'd be zero, and four, and four, and four, and eight, and eight, and eight, and eight, and seven, two, 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 six, 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 and so forth. This is called a split stem because you've got so much data in such a small amount of area, they split it up so that it doesn't extend too far out this way. The other way that you might see this, instead of the second number there, you might see dots. So this would actually be 5 dot, 6 dot, 7 dot, 8 dot. And in a split stem, it goes, the lowest 7 is the number 70 through 74, and the upper one is 75, 75 through 79. But what's really missing here, and it's important, but we don't see it here, is some form of key. And, and as a key, we should have some piece of information that says, oh, 8 on the left slash 8 on the right is equal to, uh, that came out as not equal to, it's, it's equal to, is equal to 88. It could also be that 8 slash 8 is equal to 8.8. That's why you need to define what the key is so that we recognize what these values mean. Okay? Now, Let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages between the stem and leaf display and, and uh, a histogram. Uh, wash. All right. So an advantage with the stem and leaf display is that you see every single piece of data. That's good because here I know that there are exactly four 80s. There are four people that had a, a pulse rate of 80. If I go back to the... If I go back to the, the histogram, the histogram previous and previous, and here's, here's what I see. And, you know, we'll even go back to the, the free. Stop that. Work, please. There we go. Okay. If I go back to this, I know there's 21 pieces of data in here. Problem is, I don't know what these pieces of data are. I've got 21 pieces of data between zero and a $5 change. But what that might mean is that I've got 21 zeros. Or I might have one zero and 24 dollars I don't know what they are. However, if I look at the stem and leaf plot, I know exactly what the pieces are. If I have a really large data set, however, this becomes really, really, really long. And it's not uncommon for you to have data sets that have 100, 150, 1,000 pieces of data in. And trying to create a stem and leaf plot for that would be very, very hard to do. So if you have a large data set, this becomes unwieldy. So seeing every piece of data is an advantage when it's small, but it's a huge disadvantage when it's big. The other thing that we need to talk about is that if you're looking at this, a stem and leaf plot, I can decide what the width of these bars is going to be. I can determine that all on my own. I can say, oh, it's going to be $5 width. No, 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 no. It's going to be a $1 width. No, it's going to be 25 cents. So I can determine what the width of these bars is going to be. If I go with a stem and leaf to plot, stem and leaf plot, the width of these bars, and, and think about it, these are bars because if you turn your head this way, like this, and you look at it, there's the histogram and there's bars there's the frequency going that way and and there are bars there but the width of these bars are either going to be a width of five if you've got a split stem or if i have a non-split stem it's going to be a, a width of ten so it's based off of five or ten for these width and it has to be that way because of the number system that we use which is base ten and the reason that we count in base ten 
in case you didn't know that, that's just information there. Okay. All right. This is a dot plot. It's like a bar graph. Each one of these dot represents a, a, a unique piece of information, a frequency. Uh, it's, it's the best way th to describe what this is used for. This is used for if you're creating your data set on the run, it's very, very convenient to use. Otherwise, a bar graph is, is, is going to be, I'm sorry, a histogram is going to be a better piece of information because you can adjust it to what you want to be. If I have a piece of data, though, I have to have a dot to represent each frequency. Okay, coming back in a second.